So, has everybody made the input? Yes? Who is guilty? Who hasn't? Who hasn't? Okay. Now, I think tonight is a little bit special, right? I think you understand that when I'm organizing an event like this, it's sometimes difficult to predict who will show up. We have 200 registrations, and you know Singaporeans live such a busy life that even though we have 200 registrations, maybe half show up. I, I applaud you for showing up because it means that you really care about your future. And one of the things that why I picked this topic is because I just came back to Singapore end of last year. I left Singapore. Do I need to tell you my age? I think I'm okay to tell you my age, right? Because I, I want to actually know Lisa's age, and I, I, I want to tell you my age, because we kind of come from a very different background. But on the other hand, we see a lot of things eye to eye. I have a lot of respect for Lisa, but I, I will tell you one single thing she doesn't even know. One single thing, and I encourage you, if you're going to do your own business or you're going to, you know, hope, hope, hope that you do well in your career, and if you somehow hope that you can try something new, there's one thing I really respect about Lisa, and that's why she was my opening speaker, is because regardless of how busy she is, she always has time. She responds not only to my every request and query, she also takes the time to read all my LinkedIn posts and like every single of my LinkedIn posts. I can't compete with her, okay, because she's got a lot more. But in this day and age, trust me, it's very important. I hope to think that you are here because you care. Because if not, I don't know why you're here. Then I don't know why both Lisa, myself, and the following speakers are even bothering to give the time to share whatever we could share. So I want to set that tone and also because from the questions that you ask and from your body language and from your response, I may tune my presentation slightly different because I think, you know, we are an intimate group, aren't we? Yes? yes? And so let's take it easy. I don't need to kind of hound you with a lot of concepts. Uh, feel free to be open and we're here. You see, Lisa is still here. She could have walked out after her presentation because she's hell busy, right? If she's trying to set up, you know, 23 countries and 23 countries more. But she bothered to take the time, and that, for me, speaks volumes. Okay. And organizing this, this whole event has been very stressful for me, so trust me, when I say I really value that you show up. And I hope that because of that, you're different. Yeah? And that you will be more different. That's what really what I hope for. Okay. So, um, so Anne, do you think you can try to kind of log in and see what kind of percentages that we get from the response? You know, I'm not that tech savvy as I want to be, so. We couldn't put it on screen, but Sue Ann is going to tell us. Now, now, I'm just going to do a little exercise because I know as much as we enjoy listening to Lisa, it's difficult for you after a day's work to come and you know, attend something like this. And I really, really applaud you for that. So can I invite you to stand up? Guys, stand up with enthusiasm. Now, turn around, whether it's someone in front of you or behind you, and I want you to kind of just say, hey, look, I'm really worried about being obsolete because, or, you know what, hell no, I'm not worried because I don't have to worry about it. So can we have a conversation about that? 
Two minutes. I cannot see. That's Somewhat agree as for the sun and the sun. Uh -huh. Then very much agree. Can we have back in your seats? Um, yeah. Love you so much. Anything I can do for you, you tell me. I know. My new startup, I need help. I love this when people are chatting, networking, always nice. Are you ready? Can I proceed? All right, my, my talk is only 10 minutes, yeah? Only 10 minutes. Now, how many of you are working in a full-time job? Okay, how many of you are not working at all? Don't be shy, let's be transparent. Okay, how many of you are really in a startup, by my definition, a real startup? Okay, how many of you are kind of lost in transition? <laughs> Cynthia, that's not true. Okay, now, 
the reason why I ask this question is really, I kind of need to tune my presentation slightly differently, right? Uh, I, I happen to be one of the very, very blessed women, so I have to, I have to kind of put that into perspective, yeah? Because every job that I've ever had, and they're all multinationals, I've never really had to apply for it. So I really got every job after my very first job through a headhunter who takes at least 30% of my salary. Not, not from me, from, from, from the person who employs me. So I do want to put that in perspective. And so I, I like that you know Lisa comes in from a perspective where you start with almost nothing, if not negative, right? Negative, because a lot of people would have judged her before her success today as to like, who the hell are you? Why should I listen to you, right? So, so that's really very different. So I don't want to kind of put my presentation in a, at, a, at a wrong level. So I want to share with you some little tricks because a lot of times when we come to startup events, a lot of us talk about inspiration. No, today I want to give you one, just one or two tips that I use really from the time that I was nobody. And then after that, how did I get where I got today? So to put things into perspective, I'm 53 years old right now, okay? I do want to put that in perspective because I think it's important that you understand that me and my next speaker has really seen through a lot in terms of technological breakthroughs. So I'm not talking shit, okay? I'm really talking about somebody who has seen through the different evolutions. And I, why do I want to do that? And why is this topic interesting for me? Because I came back to Singapore last year, and last year, after leaving Singapore for three decades. Now that I've said 53 years old, it's okay to say three decades. Okay. <laughs> So let's put that in perspective. You can post on Facebook, it's okay, <laughs> yeah? Now, so the point is that for six years prior to coming back to Singapore, I was in fashion. Can you imagine? <laughs> now, I, it's not even on my LinkedIn profile, okay? So why did I do that? That was just like a hobby. Because I was living in Hong Kong for many years. I, I arrived in Hong Kong on the day of handover from Hong Kong to China, 1997, June 30th. So it was a very symbolic day for me. And, that, and, and so, you know, funny thing is, even though I've lived in Hong Kong for so long, I actually didn't know Hong Kong. So that was why, um, kind of seven years ago, I decided to get into fashion and really understand SME. Because I've had very blessed, a very strong corporate life, which really was handed to me almost on a platter, right? Well, sorry, you can't be born my time. But if you were born my time, maybe you could have been as lucky as I. So therefore, riding on that, I wanted to know what the Hong Kong consumer was really like. What does it mean Hong Kong rentals are higher than New York rentals, you know? I really wanted to understand why people say, if you want to rent this space, you've got to make your decision right now, today. I go, are you crazy? Go, no, you've got to make your decision today because the next hour, it will be gone. So at first, I thought it was a scam. But very quickly, I realized it is not. Because in Hong Kong, that's how it works. If you really think that space is good, there is a thousand other people who also think that space is good. And therefore, it will be taken. And that's another thing about you guys. If you're here, I'm really happy you're here because sometimes in Singapore, we take a lot of things for granted because a lot of things are so easy here. I'm very sure if I speak to a landlord in Singapore, he'll say, hey, give me time to choke, choke this place. 
choke this place ah, one week, ah, one month. Ah, because I'm big deal, okay? I'm Christina too. Yeah? And trust me, they will choke for me. Okay? But the point is in Hong Kong, I don't care who the hell you are. I also don't care if it's Lisa Parker. Yeah? No choke. Money first. So when you have lived abroad for so long, I think you understand how not to take things for granted. And that's why this topic is so close to me, because when I was six years in fashion, you go like, eh. OK, honestly, I'm a very lucky person. And that's why I give a lot. And that's why I started Startup Asia Women, because really, I don't need a lot of things. Okay, Just buy me a bottle of wine every day, watch Netflix, I'm very happy. Trust me. Really, really, content. really, yes, content. Zizhu, right? When I got married at 46 years old, my message was content. That was it. Because when you know you have enough, you don't need more. Okay? But having said that, don't get me wrong, I'm not here to tell you you don't need more. You need bloody hell more. <laughs> okay. Trust me, you need bloody hell more. Because today, if you sit on your laurels, I'm sorry, I won't see you next week. You're gone. Okay. With Amazon bankrupting Toys R Us, right? with Netflix displacing Blockbuster, please, don't sit on your laurels. I can, you can't. Let's get that straight. Okay. So therefore, I'm really happy you're here. But seriously, for those six years that I was in fashion, although it was fun for me, trust me, I really felt walled in. I felt I was shielded. I felt like I'm obsolete. I did. So if you thought today, the Christina that you see today, you go like, of course she doesn't think she's obsolete. Yes, I would have voted no. By the way, the results uh, from my team says 75% of you either agree, somewhat agree, or very much agree that you are worried about getting obsolete. This is the truth. Okay. And only 16% say you don't agree. That means 16% of you are very comfortable. Yeah? Okay. So that's just to put that into perspective. So therefore, um, I know what it means. So I'm not, I'm not talking from any high horse. I actually know what it means. Because if you are 53 years old, if you are a baby boomer like me, and you look at every job description, oh my God, the kind of digital skills they ask for, you drop dead. There is no way I could apply for anything because a lot of people say, Christina, why don't you go back to corporate, right? Because I had, trust me, I had a very, very glorious, glamorous corporate life. But I chose to go and get married, uh, go look for a husband in New York at the age of 41. So that's my choice. So today, it's your choice, right? What you want. Now, too many talk about robots taking over. It's true. It's true. And it's not. So I, I took a picture of this because in one of these food courts, we actually already have this in Singapore, just in case you don't know. OK, we already have this. So I was kind of happy. So why I put, we are living on borrowed time? Because I was kind of happy because they still need, I'm not happy that they needed an a, a elderly lady to take the dishes from this robot, right? And then, and then to put it in the right place and to remove the, the, the dishes from the table to put it back in the robot. I'm not happy about that because I have an 83-year-old mother and that's the reason why I'm back in Singapore, so I'm not happy about that. However, I'm kind of happy that we are living on borrowed time, as in we still have a little bit more time because this robot is not doing everything yet. Okay. But it's so easy in Singapore, and, and I must say, and that's why I kind of, you know, against everything that I feel, appreciate what the government is trying to do, why they're trying to upskill us and reskill us? Because really, this can be quite scary. The day that they do everything for you, 
can be quite scary. Maybe not for you, but for somebody else around you. Okay. So I would really want to challenge that we don't. We need to get our facts right about whether robots are taking over, but at the same time, we shouldn't be sitting on our laurels, right? So recently, I was at a talk just four days ago, and there was this professor, and interestingly, he is in materials engineering. Okay, and I love the way he said, "You know what? We actually don't appreciate." how we can have, okay, I don't have my phone here, right? How we can put so much into a phone because of new materials that we've discovered. So if you're trying to plan your children's career, think about materials engineering, right? So it is really that amazing. So it's really new, new materials, new kind of jobs, new way of working. How do you know you're obsolete? Can someone tell me? How do you know you're obsolete? One person. Anybody? Uh, not for me. But yes. It's AI now. It's driverless car. Okay. In the future, there's dri no bus drivers anymore. Okay. I'm talking about myself. But okay. It, yes. It could affect. Yes. So it's yes, and the the question was not really just about anybody, but just kind of generally a trend that yes, you know, how can we all be obsolete? How do we know we're obsolete? Because at some point in time, when jobs are being replaced, right? So let me put it at a very granular level. You know you're obsolete when you don't understand what everybody else is talking about. Who is guilty? Okay? You, you know you're obsolete when you don't have a point of view. You can't contribute to that conversation. It means you're not, you're not learning, basically. Okay. Now, I mean this pretty seriously. Okay. So I think it's really important if 75% if of the people in this room actually think that they're kind of worried, whether it's real or fake, whatever you pulled in, into our system, then I think you need to ask yourself, if people are talking certain things and you, you don't even understand what the hell they're talking about, maybe you're even closer to obsolution than you thought. Okay. And if you do nothing about it, then you're definitely on the way to doom them, right? So that's what I'm trying to get this group to think about. Yeah. Now, you all have heard all this stuff before. A lot of the jobs, if you are, because just now we saw a lot of people with full-time jobs, a lot of these jobs didn't, were not even here. You never even thought about it. And that's why I didn't even think about going back to corporate, right? And the worst thing is, if you have kids, you've got to start worrying about, I know it's a little bit blur here. Can you imagine 3D printing? By the way, talk about learning, right? I actually intentionally went to attend a jewelry design workshop. It's a preview. But what I learned from that was 3D printing. 3D printing can shorten the time I can get this piece of jewelry. I love jewelry, in case you haven't noticed from every event that I run. So the fact is, how much do you know about 3D printing? How much do you know which industries have evolved and can adopt this within seconds? Yeah? So all these jobs, and if you have children, because I don't have, you may want to be more concerned about what's going to happen to future jobs. These are all alien to me. I, I don't know if I want to live that long to 2025, because I will probably think I'll be very irrelevant by that time, right? And really, can you imagine us turning every Uber driver into a data scientist. Our next speaker, who is really my data go-to guy, he will definitely impress you about this, right? Everything that you take for granted every day that you do, you don't even know you're contributing to the data economy. And that's what's happening. So I challenge you to really go find out more if you don't want to be obsolete, right? So there is no shortcut, basically. Keep learning.
really, really keep learning. And that's why one of the visuals of our event this time is we don't know what we don't know. Trust me, I really went through that. Because I can be very happy, seriously, not knowing anything, not doing anything. Really, I can be. But now that I am in the startup ecosystem in Singapore, oh, God, I think I really know a lot of stuff that I never knew before. And it's invigorating. You want to be there. Trust me. So kind of put in that effort because really there is no shortcuts. If you came here thinking that Lisa, myself, and the other speakers are going to give you some shortcuts, sorry, they ain't. Right? And if you have kids, all the more you care about doing what future generations do. Because that's the only way you will know. And I always believe you cannot say you want to learn something. Like, I want to get my, my I want to get in the ocean, but I don't want to get my feet wet. It doesn't work. So, if anybody has seen since the time I came back to Singapore, everything about me is about doing. The only way I learn is about doing. Okay to fail, but must do. Then we see what happens, right? So now, I want you to also take a look at this, because I can tell you I score seven on all of this, and I'm sure Lisa scores seven on all of this, and I know my next speaker scores seven on all of this. Can I get you to be really honest to see whether you score seven on all of this? Now, if you look at the, the above headline, growth mindset versus fixed mindset, Google, okay? So I'm not going to have time to talk to you about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. But in Singapore, we have a luggy, funny mindset called uncle and auntie mindset. <laughs> who, who understands what's an uncle mindset? Tell me. Raise your hand. You're supposed to raise your hand. So for people who are you know, new to Singapore or, or, or you know, expatriates that have joined Singapore, I think you've met the uncles and aunties as well. Right? In Singapore, you have these uncles and aunties who go like, nah, nah, that's not for me. Right? I could have said that because I could have been an auntie myself. Right? But, all right, so how many of you can you rate? How many of you rate um, six and above on all of this? Okay, good for you. All right, put your hands up, put your hands up. How many people rate five and below for all of this? Come on, be honest. All right, so it says your own self-test, right? The whole idea is, I think some of us are too old to go back and take another degree, okay, and another degree. And by the way, when I listened to this professor, he told me exams are a waste of time. He's actually trying to persuade NUS to give up the exam system, seriously. Right? Because really, how many of us really got a job because of whatever degree that we took? I'm an economics degree holder. I know nothing about marketing and I know nothing about business. But every, every job that I got paid was for that. So therefore, forget about all this, right? Exams don't mean much. So that's why the attitude. And I recently watched a, a documentary about Lady Gaga. And I think that's why some of them actually killed themselves, right? So Lisa was talking about people killing themselves as well. Um, role models, I, I love that in, in the startup world nowadays, there's so many role models you can pick. Mentorship is overrated, according to me. But role models you can find, right? Even if you're not having a direct connection, you can read about them and you can kind of figure out what they are about. Even just reading Lisa's postings every day, she can be a role model with you, even if you don't talk to her on a daily basis, which is what is it that they have? Now, I can tell you one thing. If you really look at Lady Gaga's le recent documentary, right, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And I was very stressed even creating this event. And so, trust me, if you don't tolerate mediocrity, right, so don't... Don't say, ah, oh, it's okay, it's okay, uh, you know, half-baked, it's okay. Then, seriously, you can get very far. So that's one of the most important things. Now, I'm going to kind of end because my timing is up. I have this um, 
really secret formula. I call it fundamentals. I don't even talk about this very much. So today probably is the first time I really talk about it publicly. Um, when I was recruited by O2 to launch the very first Windows smartphone across all of Asia Pacific, I had no phone experience. And at that time, I had a dream. I wanted to enter the phone business because that was a cool thing. And that was before anybody was willing to pay $1 for data. Data was not expected to be charged. It was expected to be free, OK, when I started. And so I will share with you two stories, and then I have to bring it to a close so that my next speaker can come on, right? So one story is um, I was hired into British Telecoms, which then spun off to O2. And how did I take O2 from $0 to $300 million in my third year with them. And after that, of course, I retired and, and went to New York to look for a husband. It's a true story. I was reported in Her World magazine back then. So eat, eat pray, love. I was the love. So if you Google, uh, so weird, right? I don't look it. But it's true. So. Um, because baby boomers are crazy and blood A type is crazy, so we make crazy decisions. So it was very simple. I was the very first person, trust me, who actually chose to use computer channels to sell smartphones. So before myself, nobody was using computer channels to sell any phone, okay? Because in the good old days, and these companies are not even around anymore, Nokia, Motorola, do you have their phone? Please make sure you don't have their phone. <laughs> that would be like obsolete, true to true, right? So what happened was in those days, I had no phone background, and there was no way I would be hired by a phone company. Because when you didn't work for any phone company, by that time, you wouldn't be hired by any phone people. So I was really lucky to be hired by O2. And it was very simple, because at that time, they were looking for a mobile internet person. And there was no mobile internet talent. And I was the first general manager of Yahoo in Singapore. So they go like, OK, the next best thing to have is a desktop internet person. And let's hope that she can figure out something about mobile internet. That's how I got the job, by the way. So sometimes, when we're planning for the future, that's all you need to do be in the right place at the right time. Seriously, that's fundamental for you. So then anyway, uh, when I thought about the computer channels, first of all, because I don't know anything better, right? If I were not from a phone business, how would I know any phone channels? How would I understand how they do business? So the very simple thing was, OK, what's wrong? Now, this is the same way if today you want to do a startup. You just ask yourself, what's wrong? What is it I'm trying to fix? So what was I trying to fix? At that time, if anybody is old enough to know IPAC, a PDA without a phone, they were already not making any money. In Hong Kong, because I was living in Hong Kong, they were only making 50 Hong Kong dollar per phone, less than 10 Singapore dollars today. Yeah? But they have to, because they have the inventory. So what I did was I said to them, look, sell my smartphone because you can easily make 10 times that margin. And plus, they're nerds. They love <laughs> gadgets. So of course, they're like, you don't even need to sell me. I would sell it for you anytime. Okay. So basically, the phone sold by itself. A lot of bugs, but it sold by itself. <laughs> because nerds love bugs. So if you. Correct, Azza? Sounds like an iPhone. Uh, okay. So if you understand fundamentals, I don't care if you are in a brick and mortar business today or if you are in a futuristic business today. If you understand fundamentals, every customer needs to be satisfied. But they need to be satisfied maybe today in a different way. Every customer would pay for something. Maybe they will pay more for an experience today than a product feature. 
So you just need to figure out what that is. And if you can, maybe you won't be obsolete. Or you could be like me, in the right place at the right time, I paved my way for the next step, even when I don't know what the hell it was. Okay? Now, I can go on and on with my stories. You can take me offline. Uh, don't ask me for coffee chat. I only uh, accept wine chat. Okay? Please, I hate people who ask me for coffee chat. Give me wine chat. I would probably... Um, please make sure you buy the wine. So, enough of me spending enough on coffee chat, right? So, so really, really, that's the point. If you understand fundamentals, you could also then not look so stupid when people talk to you. I have to skip some of this. Uh, last point really is, please have a point of view. Yeah? If somebody asks you something, don't just agree, not agree, like no point of view. You really need to. And the lovely part about about startup, about future technology, you know, like why is it called blockchain? You know, why is it called crypto? It's so interesting. Get fascinated with all this language, with all this new stuff. Uh, it's actually very easy to understand. When you understand fundamentals, when you pick fundamentals, you really know what to do. You know how to engage. It's as simple as that. Everything that Lisa talked to you just now, Grab just the fundamentals. Then you can even save coffee chat with her. Just get to the fundamentals, right? So really, this is what about. I know I have more, but I do have to end so that my next speaker can come on. Is that OK with you? Yes. Yeah? So maybe if we do have some Q&A, uh, if it's OK with you, because I think you will be quite tired as well if we keep going and going. So let me turn on to our next speaker. Um, I will be the one introducing him because A, as I told you, I have to do some commercial because I organize this event. My website is onethingsdone.com. Make sure all of you key in onethingsdone.com. I'm going to have a launch party November 1 in a swanky place. So unless you submit something you want done, you will not be invited to my party. <laughs> Right? And you want to be in my party because I understand fundamentals. <laughs> now, Aza is somebody I knew since 1995. So that's a good thing about being old because you know enough people. And even if you don't know them, you can find them. So that's the whole idea, right? And he's going to be the data advisor of my startup because really, you want to, you want to know him when it comes to data. But if you don't have money, you don't anyhow go stalk him. Huh? I have to put that through, okay? Um, I will leave him to, ex to, to really uh, introduce himself in terms of his credentials, but I do want to tell you something. When I joined IBM in 1995, again, I was recruited. Uh, I have no prior experience for every job that I did so far. And so he taught me about database marketing. So I owe it to him, and I'm very grateful that he's willing to come to my very small little setting. And so I'm very sure he's going to wow you because you're going to look at data completely different. Every day you're going to wake up and go like, shit, what did I just do? Okay, so I'll, I'll transfer it to him, yeah? Thank you.